In July, the Chief Minister announced he'd asked all ministers to look at every sphere of the ministerial responsibilities and report back to him and to the Deputy Chief Minister by the end of August. There would also, he said, be full consultation with industry sectors, with the trade unions and with the public. That exercise has nearly been complete. That will allow us to sit down with the United Kingdom government and to plug in at their different levels of, uh, of points of entry. But I, I come back to the point that the, our, our position is well understood. We're now working closely with members of parliament who were on both sides of the argument, and all of them understand very well the need to protect and to safeguard the position of Gibraltar going forward. Some of the effects of Brexit will be obvious, others perhaps not so. A proactive approach is crucial so that every area affected can be identified now ahead of negotiations which will take into consideration the positions of Scotland and Gibraltar. Well, you'll remember that we gave government departments essentially the month of August to be able to, to, to deliver the message and to compile the message as to what, what, how Brexit would affect their department. So, for example, in the passport office, the format of passports would change, the format of identity cards would change, the question of identity cards being valid travel documents would change, the European Union health card would change. There are a, a whole range of uh, effects and a, a, a broad impact that uh, Brexit would have across all government departments. We ask them to submit their views in, in a spreadsheet format before the end of August. Those views have now come in. They are now being compiled by a small team which includes myself and the Attorney General Michael Yamas. That will then be, a master plan will then be produced by drawing information from all those different submissions that have been made. And that will be used as a basis of our discussions with the United Kingdom government. It is very similar to the exercise that the UK government has done itself in respect of the United Kingdom, and very similar to the exercise that, that the devolved administrations and indeed other territories like Jersey, Guernsey and the Isle of Man who are not in the European Union, but they also have a level of participation with the European Union, they're also conducting that same exercise as well. So in terms of uh, Gibraltar's own exercise, I think we are very much on track. We now have the submissions and we're now producing the master plan and drawing on those submissions in order to be able to produce that master plan. The assessment not only aims to identify areas which require specific negotiation, but also new business opportunities that will become available. The government says it's exploring all options open to the ROC.